asking people while you are cut out so that when you come back you can see them in the chat. Oh, I think I think Christina, you will always find something to tell people when I'm cut out. <laughs> Great. Well, it looks like it's time to begin. So I'd like to introduce uh, Siggy Jakob, uh, who's going to talk to us about the power to the learner uh, with Mahara um, and how to change learning with an e-portfolio. And so Siggy, thank you for joining us and for uh, your presentation. Okay, there it was. I was cut off, <laughs> so I'm back. But I can't hear anyone now. Okay, so Siggy, uh, I've introduced you. I'm back. Uh, I'm and, back. and we're all set and ready to go. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, as I said before, the problem is I get kicked out of my audio about every 10 minutes without any specific reason. So be prepared that I'm muted for a few seconds. So, thank you, for, thank you, Anthony, for introducing me, um, even if I couldn't hear what you talked about me. <laughs> so, I think it was nothing bad. Welcome to all the people who have made it uh, from New Zealand, from Missouri, from uh, well, Colorado Springs at strange time uh, to come to watch my presentation. Thank you so much. And uh, well, I'm going to introduce me very shortly. Um, I'm called Mahara Krenny in Germany. I've been retired now for four, five years, so I don't have any more classes. I only have uh, when I'm teaching, I'm, te I'm doing some teacher training or helping out people who want to introduce Mahara. I've been a Moodle since 2004, but uh, as I specialized on Mahara since 2008, um, sometimes I find it difficult to get back to Moodle, uh, to Moodle course and to work in a Moodle course. So um, that's very shortly my um, situation right now. I started with Mahara. In uh, 2008, there was a European project which was called MOSEP, which means more self-esteem with your e-portfolio. Um, it, um, it was aimed at young learners uh, at dropouts, because there were many of them in Europe, uh, school dropouts, that they were enabled to show that they had some knowledge, they had some uh, capabilities, they had something they could show so that they would get more self-esteem. That's how everything started. And I immediately started with my students, who at the time were doing a practical training. And they were media students and not very keen uh, and they had, as they had to do their practical training report in Word, which was not very sexy for them. So I offered them Mahara. And uh, I learned and started uh, Mahara with them together, which was a very, very good experience. Uh, we've heard a lot about um, organizational topics today, about um, Moodle uh, features, about technology. I do not want to talk about technology today. I want to talk about learning. And the person in the center of our attention is the learner. And I think for a new way of learning, we should put the learner even more into the center that it already happens in Moodle. So what, uh, who, uh, who watched, if you watched uh, Martin Dugiama's keynote this morning, um, then you, can, um, you will remember that he was talking a lot about feedback and how feedback was necessary for the development of the learner. So this is also a big um, topic and a big feature in Mahara. So, um, Power to the learner, because the learner is the center of our attention, and we have to help him to take responsibility of his learning process, because learning is a process. And we are all learning, even right now, I am learning, you are learning, uh, and it's a, lifelong, it's a lifelong process. I have chosen this um, picture. Um, it's, a, it's the famous Swiss knife. A Swiss knife is a tool. But it's just a tool, even if it is very elaborate and a very high tech tool, the one you see here, I've never seen in, um, in real life. I don't know whether it's a mock-up, but you can do anything with it. And I think this refers, this is a good uh, symbol for as well Moodle as 
Mahara, because don't forget, Moodle and Mahara, first place, are only tools. And they are tools for teaching and for learning. Moodle is more for teaching, Mahara is more for learning. But well, it's combined, you can do both things as well in Moodle and Mahara. But it's a tool and it depends very much on the it's, it, can, it depends very much on the person who works with it. We have seen many examples this morning and we have seen good examples, we have bad examples, we have seen bad examples. You can just build a hut to survive with Moodle and with Mahara. You remember the first, well, my first steps with Moodle were, um, I think we all started like that uh, years ago. I was happy that now I had a place where I could cram in all kinds of information, where I could make tests every time I saw my students, they had to do automatic tests because they had the results immediately. And it took about two weeks until everyone was completely fed up with Moodle. And then slowly I realized what was wrong, what I was doing wrong. And then, um, well, I was learning by doing together with my students and the community helped me a lot to develop from building a hut to survive to building more complex things that help my students to learn. So the aim, what we are all want to do, we all want to do, we all want to build a castle for life, or we want to do a skyscraper or a very wonderful house or whatsoever. We want to be creative. And that's what learning is all about. It's not just for the basic uh, and uh, the necessary things to survive, but we want to have something that really, that we really enjoy doing and with what makes learning more interesting. So building a castle, that has always been my um, goal together with my students, and I wanted to make them enthusiastic about that. So finally, it is not the technology, it is not the tool, it's not the Swiss knife that matters, but it is the builder that who matters. He is the one who decides what is going to do with the respective tools. <clears throat> So we are confronted in, well, I'm talking as a teacher, and I think we have a very high tension in, in schools. The tension is between um, the knowledge we are teaching in old school ways, which is in some way is also necessary to do that, and on the other side, um, the students, the students who are fed up, and I think we all understand that they are fed up with this kind of um, getting knowledge transferred all the time. And uh, here they have uh, written something, it's called Lernen statt Paugen, which means learning instead of uh, Paugen means uh, to learn something by heart just for a test, mm -hmm. teach to test, and then forget about it. So they are fed up with Paugen. They want to have a meaningful learning that has got something to do with their life and their career and their environment. So I think this is possible. We can make this possible. We can make it possible with Moodle and we can make it possible with Mahara. But learning has to be meaningful. <coughs> if the students can have do have a meaningful learning experience, they will be able to develop competences. And uh, there is a quote which I found recently. It says, competences cannot be taught, but learners need to acquire them. So where's the role of the teacher? The teacher has to take on a completely new role. He, is, he becomes a facilitator who helps the students um, to learn in a way that they um, gain competences, that they increase their competences. So that's a new role of the teacher. And uh, I also like the, the expression of active learning, active and meaningful learning. It occurs when a person takes control of their learning experience. And there we have the critical buzzword, takes control. So who normally, in a normal school setting, who has control of the learning process? Try that in the chat. I know what you're writing. Who is in control of the learning process normally? Who is in control of uh, setting up a Moodle course? It is the teacher. Normally, it is the teacher. 
So if we had a, an example this morning uh, by, I forgot the name, uh, the Japanese, the, the guy who's teaching in Japan, he gave a great example of how students took over the control over their courses. So they have more incentive to learn when they have control, not only how they learn, but also what they learn. And well, at this point, my colleagues, they come up with the argument, oh, well, we have to fulfill the curricula. But the curricula are flexible enough not to just have one road to go, but you have many possibilities to get to your goal. So you just have to ask your students how they can, how they want to fulfill something, and they will have a lot of ideas. So we are not too restricted in the end. The road is um, just there. We are just at the beginning of this road in Germany, at least with ePortfolio work. Um, the goal is to get students into more responsibility for their learning, um, to get them used to new forms of learning. That's where, that's where the feedback thing comes in. Oh, my audio is away. Just a second. Okay, that was, I could still hear me. It was strange because I got this window popping up that, uh, okay, the next time I just click away the window. Good. So to reach this goal, the students, we cannot send them alone on this difficult and long road, but they need a companion. And we are the companions. We have in our role as teachers, as facilitators, we have to scaffold their way. So. If this learning, if this active learning happens, and if they have gained competences, if the students have gained competences, then somehow our students would like to show their competences and to make their learning visible. Now, I'm going, I want to show you a way of making learning visible with Mahara today. If we compare Moodle and Mahara, then we can see that Moodle basically is made for a group of learners. It's like a classroom, a group comes together to learn, to cooperate, to collaborate, to socialize, whatsoever. All this can be done in Moodle in the group. In Mahara, it is the single learner who is in the focus. In Mahara, it's the single learner who owns his learning, who owns his portfolio, and who decides what to write, what to do with it, who to show it to, and so on. Even if in Moodle, even if we have many activities in Moodle where the student can show their competencies, for example, in the workshop or in the wiki or in the glossary or in the database, it is still not possible for, um, for a tutor, for example, to see um, at one, in one step what one single student has performed uh, within a school year, he can see the you can see the grades, but you cannot see all the picture of one student. You have to click on all the activities, on the assignments, and so on. So that's why I would say that Moodle is a place where you work together, where you learn together, cooperate, and Mahara is a place where one single learner can show the competencies and the development. So. That's why we call that Mahoodle. It's a perfect couple. And this morning, um, while Martin was giving his keynote, I asked in the chat whether it was because he said uh, that uh, ePortfolio would be introduced into the Moodle development. And I had suggested that uh, maybe we should really marry Moodle and Mahara because Mahara is open source. It's open source from New Zealand. Christina will talk about that. Uh, I think this Christina is talking. Um, where is that? On Friday, yeah, exactly. You mustn't, you absolutely mustn't miss her her uh, presentation, Christina Höpner. She's the Bahava community manager for all of those who don't know that yet, and she's a very very helpful person. So I asked him whether we could not marry Moodle and Mahara because, well, basically the same developers worked on the systems, and it is really 
seamless, it, it seamlessly fits together. So hopefully, maybe in future. So that's the couple, Mahilu. And uh, there is uh, Alison Miller, which maybe you have met already in your in your um, earlier when you were when you were reading about uh, e-learning. Um, she has given some reasons why you should uh, why you use Mahara, Moodle and Mahara together. And she has given she's uh, created a table which I want to show you her here. Um, you see. The first, pop, the first point is the control. So who is in control? Yeah, it's the educator, and in Mahara, it's the learner. In Moodle, it's more or less the learning product, but it can also show for some in the workshop, it can show the learning process too. So I don't agree completely with that point. It encourages meeting key criteria that, for example, the curriculum sets up. In Mahara, it's to manage your own learning goals. If we are realistic, we still have to admit that the learning goals are uh, set also by the curriculum and by the teachers and by the requirements of their, what has to be done. Um, so I'll just skip that. So Moodle is owned by the class. This is owned by the student. The layout, the setup of the whole course is done by the teacher unless you give your students tutor rights and let them do an own Moodle course, which is also possible. Goals are normally chosen by the teacher. So you can see that here the teacher is really the one in control. Yes, Paula. You know, this is one of, I think, this visualization I set up years ago, but I still find it so helpful that I didn't skip it. Because you really can see the control here is with the teacher, and here the control is with the student. Even on publishing, the student decides when and where to publish. Um, I just would like to come back to one point, the feedback. Feedback culture is a very poor culture in Germany. And we've been working hard on that. Teachers have to give feedback to each other now officially, but it's that's a different thing. And the students are not yet used to get feedback and to give feedback. To get feedback, yes, maybe, but to giving feedback is a difficult thing. So this is, Mahara is a great tool where you can help your students, where you can train them to do qualified feedback. I will show to, this to you later in an example directly in Mahara. If you have questions, just type them in the chat, please. I will try to have an eye on the chat. So that's what happens in the Moodle room. Again, talked about this earlier, so we can skip that. And this is Mahara. Um, this is also a very old visualiza visualization, but I still love it because it's so colorful. And that's what Mahara can be. It's very individual. It is very personal. The learner controls everything. And in contrast, for example, to WordPress or Blogger, uh, the learner can decide to share the content to make it not either public or private, but everything in between and with every person or group he likes to. We will have a look at this later. So it's much more flexible than any other um, online blog. It has a social network, which helps a lot when you introduce Mahara to your students because they immediately socialize there. So that's the first thing I let them do. I let them befriend themselves and write messages and so and the sharing. The sharing is very important today because a student who has put in some um, artifacts and has created a wonderful page doesn't only want to show it to the class, but he might be he, he might want to show it also to um, a future employer uh, if he when he applies for a job. There's a huge field of use in this sharing possibility. So what can you can a student do in um, in uh, Mahara? The first thing is that a student that you can collect stuff. You can collect anything that is digital, and uh, the problem is that we have to teach students not to collect anything, but to start collecting things that go together with a certain project, which is normal in other projects as well. So you wouldn't collect anything for a specific, a specific uh, project. 
the everything that is put into Mahara and is collected is called an artifact. This is an expression that comes from art at the time, and uh, it has been kept all over Mahara, and it has not been translated in different languages because we thought this is an internationally uh, well-known um, expression, and we just leave it with that, even if it's a bit strange. So collecting artifacts, then the second thing is the reflection. Uh, E-portfolios, basically, if you ever read or heard about e-portfolios, e-portfolios are basically meant as reflection tools. But as I told you before, Mahara is just a tool and you can use it in many different ways. So there will be, except um, according to your uh, to the situation, it will be more reflective uh, portfolio or it will be a documentation portfolio or whatsoever. I have prepared a lot of examples later to show to you. So that's the second uh, point, reflect. Reflecting occurs already when uh, the teacher uh, talks about the artifacts that a student has uploaded for a project and makes the student reflect about whether they are useful or not for the project. And the next step is to present. Well, I, I like this picture, even if this is not digital, but it's a nice way of presenting your stuff. And that's what students can do with portfolio, with e Mahara. The third step is um, after presenting something in on a page, on a table, or whatsoever. Oh, I'm kicked out again. Can you still hear me? Yes. Okay, so I just click that away and continue. It's, is it okay now? So the next, the last step is to publish something. And then uh, there are many, many ways of publishing stuff in Mahara. We'll have a look at that. Add that closer. You can collect anything that is digital, that is digital, from PDFs to um, very elaborate uh, videos that you've made, and you can include also all the stuff uh, that is on the internet. You can embed objects. You know, you all know this from Moodle. Uh, the difference is that in Mahara now it is the user himself who embeds objects, so there is a security issue which has been solved that uh, in the way that uh, iframes have to be allowed by the admin. There is a certain set of iframes that are already allowed, but an admin can add all other iframe uh, addresses he wants to. I think Christina might be telling something about that in her talk too. So what can you do? You can manage knowledge. That's a, a field. I can see, for example, in a project group in, um, in a business where they work together, where they manage uh, their knowledge, a student can manage the knowledge. You can collect the work results that can either be um, written work results or they can be pictures or they can be other artifacts, uh, whatsoever are these, these results are. You can show your competencies in many different ways and I can tell you Students are very, very creative when it comes to showing competences in different ways. I had one student, instead of writing long texts about, the, about the, uh, the practical training, he took pictures of all the processes he did and um, he outsourced them uh, online and then he embedded that. So there was a picture story, a photo story about that. I never had the idea you could do it like that. He was very clever because his German and English wasn't so good. So showing competences, reflecting the learning process. Um, don't start. If you consider to introduce Mahara, do not frighten your audience by telling them, OK, now here we have a tool where we are going to reflect about the learning process. They will all hide under the table within a few seconds, I tell you. But reflecting starts already if you give them just a couple of questions, lead questions, for example, uh, practical training. They have, to re they have to think about why they chose a specific uh, workplace, uh, what they liked there, what the outcome was. So if, as a teacher, you help them and just cathode them there, then you can already trigger this learning process. And the more they are used to do this, when it comes, for example, to teacher training, in teacher training, Teacher trainees have to do reflection, reflective e-portfolios. They have to think about how a lesson went and what they learned and so on. 
and then it will work. But you have to scaffold that with kind of lead questions. It's not so difficult, and this is already a reflection process. So it's not so scary as it sounds. It's lifelong learning, and uh, this is also something that I would like to remind you. If you start with Mahara, with, a, with your student on a Mahara platform, make sure, you have to make sure that your students, even after leaving your institution where they have their Mahara stuff, that they still have access. Well, now that we have the export function, they can take along their stuff, but that's not really the nice way. The, good, uh, uh, the, the best solution is in uh, New Zealand where they have uh, my portfolio and uh, in my portfolio every school has, this, um, has an institution and a student who changes institutions um, does not have to change Mahara. So students can stay there from, thank you Christina, that's the link, that's really wonderful. You see, you get a lot of information and everything there. So this is the goal because if they in a Moodle course, uh, they have no more access when they have left the institution or the course, right? So all the stuff is lost unless they saved it before. In Mahara, they are the owner, so you are not supposed to take that away from them. You have to ensure that they keep their stuff. Very, very important. That's a prerequisite. It's for professional development. And it's also for use for applying for jobs. And it's done more and more. And some of my students who applied with their ePortfolio for getting another practical trainee uh, placement, they got beautiful, wonderful places due to their good ePortfolio pages. Um, there, I will also show you examples for that. Uh, the nice thing about that, you don't have to, if you want to share a page for an, for an application, uh, all you have to do is to create a secret URL with this single page and send it to your future employer. And no one else will see that. And then that's why it's so colorful. It's also meant for personal learning so the students can make their very private blogs uh, about their traveling experiences or their hobbies. I always start, when I introduce Mahara, I always let them do create first uh, a page with their hobbies, and it was very interesting to see. This is a prerequisite to learning anytime and anywhere. You have to be connected, and you have to have access um, from all the places, and uh, that's the same for Moodle as it is for Mahava. I don't think we have to talk about this, but this is, should be the normal situation now. And uh, it's also nice because Mahara is um, also you can use Mahara also on mobile devices without any problem. There is a responsive design now, and uh, well, even if you can't, if you are not, if you don't want to write long blog entries or something like this, but you can upload pictures and things like this directly from your mobile device. The most difficult thing now is the change, because what we need is a change in teaching and learning, and all we need to change is to let go. And uh, I listened, I watched a talk from Mahara who the other day from uh, Pascal Hibou, uh, I can't remember the second name. And uh, she said, everyone wants change, but when it comes, Pascal Hibou Perron, yeah, but when it comes to change, uh, then people hide under the table. So this really has to, we have to change our mindsets. We have to give control to the learners. We have to set the learners free to manage their own learning. But we are not supposed to let them do that alone. We have to help them. We have to scaffold their learning. So I will show you an example how I did everything when I started um, with my uh, Moodle with my students. Um, all of my students, all of my classes had their Moodle course room. That was their kind of home. That's why you can see the picture here uh, of the students. And uh, they, it's their virtual classroom. They were at home there. That's where we communicated, we collaborated. Oh, now I'm kicked out, I think. Flash. Can you still hear me? Ah, good. Oh, 
at least I don't have to restart. That's good. So this is this is much faster. Um, and there are at home there, and uh, that's where everything happens. So then this is an example of the Moodle course room. At a certain point, I was fed up by giving them assignments and having them upload their results into the assignment because the only persons who could see that what the student had uploaded was the student himself, herself, or the te me as the teacher. But sometimes there was so good, really so good things, and I thought it was a pity that they were hidden in the assignments. And I'm not the one who is very keen on grading. Uh, grading was um, also a topic this morning. I'm more for feedback uh, because it helps learning more. So I decided at a point that uh, I will put the assignment, what they had to do, into the Moodle course. So here's the topic. And here I have put in the assignments. And I had asked them, and I had asked them to um, put their results of what they were doing. And they had many choices. For example, they could set up a video uh, to do that, or they could write a report, or they could prepare um, um, uh, interview questions on a video or whatsoever. There were many ways they could choose what they wanted to do. So the nice thing was that the result, the outcome um, of these assignments with each student's portfolio were all different from each other. And it was really interesting to see that. And all the other students had the possibility to see what the others had done. And there was no copying from one another. Well, that happened sometimes. But then uh, you realize that much faster than um, if they just hand in Word documents or something like that. So that, that's where really the fun started for the students. And uh, that's how, how it looked like. That is uh, one student's uh, page for English. We had agreed to call this Learning Diary English. So in the end, this is, you can compare this to, um, to an access to what the students have and where they put in, in written form all their assignments and collect that. Right? But here they could put in everything digital, so it was much more interesting. And I let them, I gave them the freedom to choose the layout and the arrangement and what they wanted to do. So they were much more willing to uh, work on that. I can't show the, the the page anymore because that's five that's five years we did this and they are no more on the platform. So I just have a few screenshots. So this is uh, my Mahara project page. You can see it here from the register that uh, we are in Mahara now. And uh, one big advice, one important advice I want to give you, if you start a Mahara project with your students, don't make them work in Mahara and you stay outside and watch them doing. You have to, this is absolutely necessary, you have to do, if you ask something your students should do, you should do the same. So I was setting, I set up also project pages, and uh, this is a part of my collection. And I wrote about our experiences and our learning road we had during the school year with Mahara and with Moodle, all the experiences and the and the bad experience and the good experience. And the students they could comment on that. Um, if you have questions or comments, just feel free to write that in the in the uh, chat, please. Uh, I would like to welcome, because at the beginning there were just a few people, but now we are 15, so I'd like to welcome all of you. Thank you for coming. So how does this ePortfolio concept work? Um, basically, there is nothing new. Because if you want to do something, the first thing is you have to define your goals and your context. You do this with whatever project you want to do. The next thing is also nothing new. You collect, sort, and combine artifacts with your goal. That's already where reflecting comes in. Why do I have this? Okay. That's where reflecting and controlling the learning process comes in. And that's all also the um, the place, this is also the place where the role of the tutor, of the facilitator, is very important to help students there. 
Then the next step would be presenting and sharing the ePortfolio artifacts, uh, so the finished pages. And this is the most important point or very important point for all teachers because uh, whenever I introduced Mahara and I did not talk about assessment, that was sure, sure a, safe, uh, a question that was always asked. People were asking me, well, but how are you going to grade that? And then I told him, okay, I'm not creating that. I'm assessing that, I'm evaluating, and uh, I'm doing this together with my students. A very easy method, which I found, by the way, my students, they wanted to be graded. They said, okay, if we do that, we want to get a grade for that. I said, okay, so what are we going to do? So we set up um, a rubric. I did this together with my students, and we, together with the students, we found out the main um, requirements um, of such a portfolio, what should be in, what is important, and how many, how that should be created. It was not complicated. It's like, uh, for example, if they do a PowerPoint presentation uh, on their project, you also have to create, it that, create that with a rubric. And that worked very well. And as I had integrated the students right from the beginning, I never, I really tell you, I swear, I never had problems with the creating or with creates or whatsoever with the ePortfolios. So this is another way of getting the students involved. So this is the scenario again, basically the same. And my presentation will be in the course room, so you can go through this at your own pace. So I told you before that Mahara is also a place with social networking and um, learning. That's uh, Helen Barrett. You must have heard about Helen Barrett. She is really the Pope of uh, the, the real Mahara Kweni, the Pope of uh, ePortfolio. She had a wonderful TED talk once. Um, if you have the time, just watch this TED talk by Helen Barrett. And she talked about the social, um, the importance of socializing in learning. She said, uh, it's no point of being a lonely learner, even if you have your own portfolio, but you have to be able to collaborate, to socialize with others. So this is integrated also into Mahara. And you can see it here. This is uh, my profile page. You can adjust all the pages. And here you can see friends. And uh, here you can see that uh, you also have a pin board. Everyone can write into each other's pin board. You can make this private or visible for all the other ones. So this is the social page. And now I would like to talk about my fridge, because in my course room, I have promised you to invite you for dinner tonight. You will be invited for dinner. That's a promise. Um, well, here, this is my fridge. There is um, all kind of stuff which I really don't like too much. Uh, there is too much meat, and there are no veggies and no salad. I prefer. So this is everything you find in the Mahara fridge, which is called the content. That's the cleanest looking fridge I've ever seen. Yes, maybe, but it's not mine, Steve. <laughs> oh, yes, I will show you the food later before, we, before you leave here. So this is my fridge. And uh, the thing is, the problem for you now is that you don't have access to my fridge because it is only visible to me. This is my fridge. I can decide what I do with the stuff that is inside. So here you can see my fridge in Mahara. And you can see here that uh, you have a, a separate point for content and a separate point for portfolio. Why is that so? The content is everything from profile over files, journals, resume, plans, and notes. All this is in the Mahara fridge, and it is Close. It's a closed area. It's only the user of this, um, the owner of this um, Mahara, that who can see what is in the fridge and who can do things with it. But um, the nice thing is, well, you can have files. Oh, yes, I'm just going to talk about the content of the fridge for two seconds. You have files in the fridge. And there's something very important, and I want to address this um, because maybe there are admins listening right now, and the admins are very concerned normally about um, giving uh, power to learners to do very bad things, because learners all do very bad things. So 
they would upload all kind of uh, uh, porn stuff and un, uh, things they don't have the right to upload and so on. Well, I have to say that if you start with a group of learners, uh, then before they, before, you, before they register in Mahara, they have to sign an agreement. You have to have an agreement with the school, with the, with the, uh, with the institution, uh, where there are rules. That's the first step. The second step is whenever they want to upload something, they have to click this checkbox that they are the owners. They have to certify they are the owners. They have the rights on the artifacts they are about to upload. Otherwise, no way to upload it. This has to be um, activated by the admin, by the way, if you can't see it in your Mahara. You can make folders as you're used to, which is in the fridge. You can keep everything neat and orderly. And uh, then the next step in your fridge, you have journals. Journals would be um, like diaries. I always compare, explain that they are diaries. You can have many diaries. You can have a diary for your English lessons. You can have a diary for your uh, practical training and whatsoever. This is called journals in uh, Mahara. It was called blogs before. And it basically is blogs. You can have as many as you want. And you can see here that uh, I have uh, in this Mahara, I, I'm in about 10 Mahara um, installed, so it's sometimes it's difficult. You wouldn't let you see my fridge either, okay. Um, you can see that how many entries you have already in your journals, and if you want to do, if you want to write a new entry, just click on new entry, and there it is. Or you can also, you can put that in the waste paper basket. So these are the journals. They are in the fridge. Whatever you write there, it's in the fridge. But I'm very proud of what I've written. My students are proud of what they've done, of all the stuff they've prepared in the fridge. They've prepared a nice dinner. So what they do now is they invite people for dinner. So what I do first, I set the table and I invite people for dinner. So the question is, how do we set a table in Mahara? That is uh, the artifacts I have created from the uh, content in my um, in my fridge. But I, have all, I also went shopping, so you don't you are not restricted to what you have in the fridge. You can go shopping on the internet. So that's what I did for this thing. And here we are. This is the portfolio, and in the portfolio you can create pages. And I always create a page with a table. The table I showed you for me was a page. I lay out the table. I, I lay out a page where I finally invite people. So here you can see that I have many pages already here. And uh, now Mahara has got a very nice feature. If you want to share many pages or many tables with a specific audience, you can open a restaurant so you can make a collection of many tables, and then it looks like this. This is, these are many pages, which you invite. We oh, already have something in the Mahara page. <laughs> so this is my restaurant. Uh, it's easy to share this collection and to invite people to my restaurant. So that, that's the collections. The collection is just a set of pages, and they are linked together. And you can always recombine that. So this is very. Nice if you want to send, uh, for example, a secret URL to someone with, let's say, three or four uh, specific uh, pages you have created. I have examples for that. I have to hurry a little bit. Because. So, and then we have a great thing in Mahara uh, that shows that the learner is not, it is an individual learner, but the learner is not alone in Mahara. The learner is integrated into a group, into a learning group. I love this Indian girl watching the teacher. So our learning group. So what is a learning group? A learning group, for example, would be, I give you an example. Um, I had a class, my English class. They were in a, in, a, in a Moodle course, and they were also a group in Mahara. because. Within the group, they can interact, they can collaborate, they can, they can have a forum, and they can work together, and they can see what the others are doing. And 
the nice thing in Mahara is also that, for example, in, within this group, um, they have projects where they have to work together with two or three or four. So each student within the group can create a new group. So a work group can be created for a specific purpose where three students work together and then they show their result to the group or to the, wor to the world or whoever they, choose to, uh, they chose to uh, show it to. So here you can see such a group page. That's the group I have set up for my workshop in Lübeck uh, this spring for the German Moodle Mahara Mood. In Germany, the moods are called not only Moodle, but we so for two years now we call them Moodle Mahara Moods. So you can see how close we are getting together there. Um, you can the one who has created the group can decide on the layout of this group page, and in the group you have features of you have members. You can see the members of your group. You have forums. What is very important about forums? Um, if you want to communicate in Mahara, you have to be a member of a group. Or said the other way around, if I want, if I as, an, as, an, as, a, as a teacher want to communicate with other people, I have to have a group where I create a forum and then I can communicate via the forum. Then you have pages. So in the group, people can work together simultaneously, if they want to, on set to set up one group page. This is a very useful feature uh, for projects. And students love to do this. I have an example for that to show you. You, have, you can also make collections, as a single user can make collections. A group can make collections too. And you can share, and you have a file section. This file section of a group is open for all group members. So all group members can, can contribute to this fringe and can cook together. So that's what I just told you. They can only set up in groups, forums, um, and they give members a communication tool. So now I come to one of the most important features of Mahara, which is much, much easier than in Moodle. Because in Mahara, you can either give a feedback or a comment on the complete page or on different blocks or artifacts. I will show you that in a second as well. So what you can also do is um, here, for example, you can see that if you click this, then this means you can allow comments on the artifacts. So this is, for example, if you set up a blog, if you want, oh, there's another web CT. Okay, I hope you still hear me. Can you still hear me? Good. Okay. So if you if you put in a new artifact, then this is the menu. You can say whether you allow comments. You can tag your artifacts, which is very useful. Also, for example, blog entries that are tagged. You can make, you can regroup them if you are looking when you are looking for the text. So this is worth really doing well, and um, the things are retractable. For example, if you put in an RSS feed and uh, you display ten items in this RSS, then it can uh, very quickly lead to the so-called scroll of death. So you have the possibility to retract that, like you can do this in Moodle as well. So you have full control of sharing your pages. These are the. This is one page I have selected. I choose edit access, and then I can say whether I want to make it completely public. I want to share it with the logged in user, with friends, my friends, which are in my profile, or if I make it completely, if I just choose one specific person, or I can make a secret URL. I can create a secret URL and uh, give it to whoever I want to send it without the need for this person to be registered in Mahara. This is very useful. Um, in addition, you have the possibility to 
um, start and finish the access at a specific uh, point of time and date, so for example, for, um, for an application. Um, yes, Christina, uh, that's right. You're, this is something very important. Uh, if you have your students in Moodle, you can get them with a single sign-on directly logged in into Mahara or vice versa. And there's also the possibility of uploading from Moodle uh, assignments. For example, what they can do, they can upload an assignment into Moodle. And at the same time, if this has been activated, they just click, uh, click a box, and then it is also uploaded into their Mahara. Uh, yeah, that's Steve. That's what I, I, I was. That's a very important point. I told at the beginning that it is absolutely crucial for the learner, for the user, uh, that he can be sure that he his access is not um, is not cut. Yeah, exactly. But if he cannot remain, if he cannot stay on the system of an institution. You can still export your stuff as a, a leap to a, a file and then go, for example, to My Portfolio, Switch Portfolio, or Austria Mahara, and so on. There are many open um, Mahara installs. So that's the secret URL. Now I would like to show you some examples. We've got just 10 minutes, so I really have to hurry. Um, this is a page I really would recommend you. That is, um, um, if you have already to do with ePortfolio, you might have come across Don Present from Manitoba in Canada. And he has set up um, the so-called Career Portfolio Manitoba, where students, where adult students who have to, re, who have to retrain something or learn a new job um, are having ePortfolios where they they used to apply for a job. And uh, for example, here, this I think this is a great example. Uh, they introduced themselves with, um, with, any, with, a, uh, with a video. So uh, by the way, all the, all the examples are accessible via the links. I put the link directly on the screenshot and on the, on the headline. So you might be able just to, uh, to open them. And you can go through the examples at your own pace. Then we have another professional page, which is in uh, Savi Folio Net, which has also been set up in uh, Canada by Don Present, where individuals can um, go and create their own portfolio. So you see this looks slightly different. I'll just make it a bit larger for you to see. Yeah, it's also a video introduction. You have career goals. Um, I'm not going to stay on that very long because it's all in the presentation. And I would like you, if you're interested, just go to that example and it will lead you. They are all public. I only put in public pages you can view um, in real life then. So then um, the Swiss people have been very um, um, advanced, they are very advanced in using ePortfolio in teacher training. Uh, Portfolio St. Gallen, PH in St. Gallen, that's a teacher training institution. They have their students um, um, create ePortfolios during their training. So this is also very interesting. It's in German, but it might give you an idea how it can be used. Then there's another portfolio, um, and this time it's also from St. Gallen, but this time it's a group portfolio. That's what I told you before. There's a group of, I think it was three or four people, and they had to produce um, a page on, um, it's about uh, children's songs in various um, ways. So very interesting too, even though it's in German. But this page has been made, has been created by a group of three or four students. We also have a reflective portfolio uh, from uh, St. Gallen, and that's uh, where this student is reflecting about um, her training, how everything goes, and her progress, and so on. So you see there are many, many, many ways. Mahara is a tool, so there are many ways 
to use this tool and to fill this tool. Then uh, we have, this is the, the Pope in uh, Austria, um, Klaus Hintl. Klaus Hintl, I met right at the beginning of my Mahara journey in Austria in, at a conference. And uh, Klaus, he made his master by um, uh, on the topic of e-portfolio. And logically, he already, he also put all his master and his research stuff into an e-portfolio. And as you can see here, that's a whole collection, and he made this public. This is just excellent. Then we have instructional portfolio. I put that in because, uh, who's that from? I think this is um, from New Zealand. I can't remember now. Uh, I put that in because sometimes um, people ask me, but yes, but from which age can we use ePortfolio with learners? And this is an example that shows you that you can use it also already from a very early age. That's why I put in this example. Then um, let's show, let's just talk five minutes about assess uh, about templates. Um, Christina in one of her presentations mentioned that the, the Germans are not so keen on templates. I have to agree on that, but um, she convinced me that templates can be very helpful um, for students because we cannot expect every single student to be creative as we would like to have them or every single teacher to be as creative as we would like to have them. So it is very helpful uh, not, to make them, not to make them feel lost at the beginning to give them a template. So you can make templates for all kinds of things. What you do is you just simply set up a page, a table, set up a page uh, in your portfolio and then you make it copyable. It's just one click and you allow people to copy that. And then they just replace um, the placeholders by their own stuff. Ah, thank you, Christina. Christina, you know everything. You remember everything. It's incredible. It's really amazing. Thank you so much. Then you have a template here, an example from the University of Auckland uh, for graduating teachers. I also just wanted to show that to you. And you have a classroom reflection template. You see, you can also, this is a, a collection. There are two, um, two uh, pages combined here. So you can switch from one to the other, and you can copy that, and you can fill it out. So I always made it. Uh, I just want to um, talk about Scoobit. Who knows Scoobit? Scoobit is a great way of curating content. And what I like about, oh, Ralph is there. Oh, good. I only, I only see you now. You would have made me nervous. Your English was excellent this morning, by the way. Um, Scoobit, I like it especially because uh, you can access immediately uh, what you have scooped. So for example, this is what you can see here. Uh, this is a presentation by Christina. You can tag everything you can you, you put in there. And uh, you can directly, within Scoopit, you can open that. And you can see what it's all about. You can write comments. So here is the access. Here's the link to my Scoopit. I'm not so sure. I think Scoopit, they have changed something. And you have to register to access. You, has, you might have to try that. So then I put in uh, a number of examples and resources. Some of these um, links I have already incorporated into my presentation, but there are many more you might like. And it's kept up to it kept updated also by Alison. And um, this is really it's a Google Docs deck document, so I highly recommend that. And I'm really I arrived punctually. I can't believe it myself at the end of my presentation. So all we can do is open the curtain for our learners and make our learners put themselves out there on the stage and give them the power to become independent learners. So thank you very much for listening to me. So maybe you have some questions now. I never made it uh, punctually within my time. Lots, so I'm very proud. Yes, I'm impressed by the by my timing. I must say. 
um, I will. I, only, I already put in the um, the presentation in the course room. It's hidden, so I will just click on it so you can all see it. And uh, if you have questions, don't hesitate. I'm networking lady on Twitter. Um, I'm on Skype. I'm Siggy Jakob. Um, Siggy, I had uh, one question that maybe you could uh, respond to. As you know, I was listening to your presentation. Uh, it reminded me that perhaps some people may look at things like LinkedIn or even. Uh, something like Facebook is sort of a way of creating a portfolio or an online presence of oneself. Um, what do you see to be the advantages uh, and or disadvantages of uh, something like Mahara? Yeah, well, in Facebook, all your stuff is distributed. So it's completely different. Facebook is a, uh, Facebook is a place where you can socialize, where you can share with your friends. But you would never have the idea to apply for a job with Facebook or, for example, to set up a page in Facebook for your professional development. This is not, it's unthinkable. Facebook is a cool tool for socializing and all our students use Facebook. And that's why I always say we have to take advantage of our students using all these social um, uh, stuff uh, because for them it's easier to make, the step, to make the step to Mahara where they can create something meaningful Uh, for self-organized learning processes, yes, uh, there are, uh, for example, there are, um, I remember having seen, um, for example, the nurses, um, they get a certain, um, a certain um, rubric, what they have to fulfill, learning goals, and uh, then, um, and then um, they, um, in their own way, they set up, uh, their uh, learning process. Or for example, Ralf, what the people in Kassel are doing um, with, the learn, with the learning jobs, they get the learning jobs and then the, the students, they get organized in doing their, their things. So I think this comes quite near to uh, what you can do with that self-organized learning processes. Yeah. yeah, I think this will be the future. But the, the, the teachers are not, uh, well, we are, we are not obsolete. We really, we have a difficult, maybe a more difficult role, but it's more rewarding. I, I see that much more rewarding and it's much more fun learning and teaching in that, in that way, helping our students to become adult learners. So thank you, everyone. I hope I answered all the questions. Uh, LinkedIn is uh, just a page where you get contact. You can say what you can do. But uh, you cannot set up a page like you would do it in Mahara. So I really recommend you just have a look at the examples I put in my presentations, and then you will understand. You can do much more. It's much more complex in Mahara and more flexible. And uh, you can put your stuff together in one page. So I will just quickly go back to what I promised you. Oh, I don't have the overview of my slides. So here it is. So this is just the start of it tonight. So enjoy Great. your meal. Thanks, Siggy, for uh, for, for, for for the uh, appetizers for uh, and uh, just encouraging us to continue to to make use of Mahara. Uh, to help students. And so I think you've given a, a great presentation. Uh, very much appreciate your invitation for dinner and uh, hope that we can uh, take you up on that sometime. So yeah, if you can. whenever you come, first in person, you will have dinner. That's promised. Delightful. Uh, so next up, uh, there's a, a presentation on configurable reports as learning analytics tool and Moodle for the Lone Ranger. Uh, but uh, again, thank you, Siggy, for a great presentation and uh, have a, a great rest of the day. Yeah, thank you. I'm, I'm going to cook asparagus now. It's asparagus time in Germany. Sounds delicious. It is. All right. I think my hubby is already hungry now. <laughs> great. I sent him on a walk with the dog. <laughs> 
Good. I'm going to go ahead and stop recording. Uh, but if folks have questions, they're they're welcome to stick around and uh, and ask those in the chat. Uh, and enjoy the rest of the iMoot. Thanks again. Bye all. Oh, I had hoped you had stopped the press the. the